So I'm making this video because, I mean, when I wanted to actually search for this kind of stuff, I could not find anything decent. Not really. Uh, other than the big companies that you don't want to trust with this kind of data, I couldn't really find anything. Now, if you're the type that's all like weirded out by like talking about, you know, women's periods and other stuff, then this might not be the video for you. But if you are someone who has a period or you are with somebody or around somebody who has a period, then perhaps this might actually be something applicable and useful to you or to them or something you might just want in your sphere of awareness. So I've mentioned it in prior videos and I already asked my fiance and she said it was okay for me to make this video just in case there was like anybody who's concerned about me talking about this stuff. Um, but because of the dissatisfaction and lack of trust we have with large companies, especially in the current political climate here in America, uh, we did not want any of her sort of like menstrual data inside of a large company's application or any sort of thing like that. For whatever reason, it doesn't matter. That's what we chose to do. But there is useful things that we could potentially garner from having that data and doing things programmatically with it. So ultimately what I did is I created our own period tracking information application. And today I'm gonna to walk you through how it's built, how it's set up, how it works the way it works, and like why we did this and why it's kind of cool. And if you want help with it, you can get some help to hear, here today, <laughs> I guess. Let's look at the infrastructure of all the stuff that goes into this. I'm not gonna go into too much detail. I've done my home lab uh, review walkthrough thing. And honestly, there's just a lot of stuff for the foundation of getting these things spun up. But for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to go fast over some of the overview and dive into the actual application itself. So let's dive in. So of course, I have my hypervisor, which is Proxmox, running a Debian virtual machine, which is hosting the Portainer uh, container management thing, essentially Docker, Docker host. And inside of Portainer, is a Docker stack or compose file, which spun up the AppSmith application. Uh, Watchtower just updates it, but essentially AppSmith. Now this is the service. So AppSmith will let you create applications and do stuff with them. It's really awesome. So inside of AppSmith, I have the ability to make a UI like this. I have different pages. I can run custom JavaScript. I can even add queries, which is going to databases or even API calls, all different kinds of good stuff. And this ultimately culminates into this hosted application at this URL. This URL I have added to um, my Cloudflare tunnel, so it is publicly exposed at, well, it's not exactly this URL, but it's publicly exposed so that my fiance can enter her data no matter where she is from the web browser on her phone. It's not as ideal as like an ordinary phone app, but it's good enough. And with this, we're able to have her log her data anytime, anywhere. And it's all going to the database, which then feeds into the calculations inside of the application itself. So ultimately there are three pages to the UI. There is this data entry form, which uh, in this case, because there, are, there is some manual components, like for instance, the last, uh, we have essentially six rounds of, you know, periods uh, calculated here. So we have six of them in the past. So now the next iteration of like all the data entry for a given period is gonna be uh, ID number seven. This is because if I just did an incrementing ID every single time, I have to calculate, well, maybe the data entry for the last two days is also part of the same ID. Eh, it's all stuff I need to do grouping for some of the calculations later on. But essentially the date updates live to present day or it can be manually changed. What is the ID? It's gonna be a uh, next period ID because the current period, uh, <laughs> period, the current period ID is not available because there hasn't been anything in the last couple days. So if I say, okay, we're entering our first record, the ID is seven, then this will change to seven 
until a couple days passes without data entry, and then it goes back to not available because say the data entry period is done and we're waiting to the next one, in which case then this changes to eight and then you pick up again, so on and so forth. Then there is like ratings for flow, ratings for cramps, and then just toggleable Boolean values of spotting or ovulation, and then just free text notes if there's anything worth noting such as maybe some information you want to remember that you might want to provide to a clinician or a gynecologist or something. I don't know. So once you've entered this data and submit it, it will tell you visually, it'll give you like a little pop up and say like, Hey, you're good. I got new data. You're good to go. And also part of it is that it will send me a pushover notification of the data that was just entered. Mostly it's because uh, if she, if I suddenly forget about it and she starts uh, her period, She'll enter the information and I'll get notified of like, oh, it's that time. So maybe you need to go get some flowers or something or get some nice meals or pick up some extra slack around the house, things to make her feel more comfortable or whatever. Uh, it's awareness and notification for me. And oftentimes because I have the tism, it is sometimes difficult for me to keep track of a lot of different things or a lot of relationships and a lot of just stuff. There's too much stuff going on in my head. So sometimes these very clear notifications of things draws my attention to the critical points of life where they need more attention. So I also have views here either for her to go back to historically and edit things or just to look at stuff is like a, a data table view of just all of the entered records and data, uh, which you know, is all just listed here. So we can see like the different dates, and then uh, it doesn't show here, but the IDs, which inside the Postgres table that this is pulling from, which is really just a copy paste kind of thing here, is we do have the IDs. Um, this is the unique, the unique IDs inside the Postgres table. But what I'm looking at here is period ID. So we can group, the, say, these three records together as part of the same instance of the period. And then inside the application, uh, it will say, okay, the next one is seven because the last one was six and the current is not applicable because we haven't entered anything because it's been a few days since the last record was entered. So that is the, just the data table. So you can go back historically and edit these records. Now, also back on the data entry table is the ability to go to the analytics view. And this is what we also get something out of is with all the data entered, we have these calculations that say, okay, based on the last uh, information, based on the, the information we have, we're estimating that the next date of the start of ovulation is this time or this day, and the next estimated start date of the next period is going to be on this date. The estimated duration based on record entry of all of the prior periods, which is that is why I need the grouping of IDs, because then it can show me, like, based on count of IDs, uh, and look at the distribution of that and run an average or something, I can say that that average duration of you know, record entry is four days, four records. So that way we could say the estimated end date is this. So this could affect how we do like plans or planning ahead for things. Like this is useful information. And because it's information in the Postgres table, I can also run automations on this. So I can have as part of my, uh, if I actually open up N8N, I have part of my daily digest workflow that sends me things like what, the, what are the holidays, what's the weather, what's the current mortgage interest rates, um, yada yada. I have one of those workflows specifically for this data because um, though I'm only really tracking the actual period data, there is also a facet of knowing when ovulation is happening, but what there is also is the other phases of the period, the follicu follicular and luteal phases. So knowing information about those and how that affects the hormone cycles and behaviors. So for instance, if I have issues because of either ADHD or because I'm autistic, that you know, negative interactions, um, any sort of anger or frustration or these kinds of things really affect me more than I would think a normal average person. So because I have to deal with that increased response to any any sort of friction in a relationship or whatever, having the information in the background of my mind of knowing that, oh, okay, there is like hormonal stuff going on here. There might be issues like maybe she's also hungry on top of these hormonal is issues on top of discomfort from other things. And all of this could play into a, 
it's not really about you. So therefore, you don't need to take it as hard. So it's like information that helps reduce how hard something is hitting me emotionally because of my own issues by having this awareness. So in my daily digest, like I have, um, like when was the last date of a period's en data entry? And then this does date math to figure out which message for which phase of the period is you know, we're, we're currently in, whether it's, you know, uh, follicular, luteal, the actual period, ovulation. And so I have messages that get sent to me daily based on what phase of the cycle we're in. So a part of my daily digest is just knowing where my fiance's uh, hormone profile is. And other people might think that this is like super extra. Other people might think, wow, that is somebody who actually cares about their you know, partner, how they're feeling, how they're about them. The, the cycle is important. Uh, yes, all of it. <laughs> it is extra. But at the same time, we don't want this information to be sitting with corporate flunkies who want to do malicious, malicious stuff with it. And at the same time, like it gives me the ability to do these things for us, either to plan our plans ahead because we have information about when we can expect things. Um, she no longer has to deal with lots of manual tracking on calendars or whatever system she had before. She can just rely on this. We have standard data. We can run information programs on top of this data and it's all private and secured. And not that we're interested, but say if you were somebody who was interested in getting pregnant together, knowing when the ovulation date occurs could be useful information. So this is all, or at least maybe if you don't want to get pregnant, it's also useful information to know. Uh, so either way, uh, we have all of this set up so that just enter the data, the analytics update, and everything is tracked. And there's notifications and information sent out about it. And if you're weirded out by just the topic in general, uh, grow up. Like, it's normal biological stuff. And if you're with somebody who has a period and you live with them and you're around them, you might want to know what is affecting them because then you could either, you know, help out, treat them, you know, gently, whatever, whatever the interaction is, the information is good to have and to be aware of. So putting your head in the sand like an ostrich is not going to help your situation. So grow up. Now, if you're not that type of person, great. Hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, yeah, just kind of proud of this project because I wanted to get around to it and I couldn't find anything. I couldn't find anything, any decent applications, any decent services, either like self-hosted, uh, actual full-fledged applications, code things, nothing. Like the best thing I found was a Google Sheet with some JavaScript in it by a, a female developer somewhere. And I just took a lot of the calculations from that and remade a lot of that in just in this application. So like I have the pushover notification for when new data is entered, but I just have stuff that looks at, you know, getting when the last ID was used, inserting the actual data, uh, yeah, just calculations. And the, the calculations for the actual analytics are super simple. It's just based on like when the last uh, thing was used, or last period ID, and then doing some date math. Like, it's very simple stuff. So, yeah. Hope you found it interesting. Catch you in the next one.